All right. We are here with Chris Sletner of V Technologies. And Chris is going to be talking about Starship shipping software. And Starship integrates with major ERP software solutions, such as those from Sage Software, Microsoft, Exact, Epicor, Infor, and SysPro. So we look forward to hearing how Starship can help expedite the shipping process integrated with these major software systems. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Adrian. Next, we're going to take a look at the international capabilities in the latest Starship platform. With the arrival of version 10, we introduced the concept of bringing over line item level detail from the ERP solution so you could streamline the shipping process. And this is very useful if you're doing international shipping as you're able to match up the products or the items that you're shipping with the quantities uh, coming over directly into Starship. And that will link to the uh, commodity information that's required for getting the shipment through customs, producing your export documentation. So first we're going to take you through the process of uh, using Starship without having the items, and then we'll show you how we can streamline that process by turning on the line item integration to come over in real time. So just as uh, we did with domestic shipments, we're going to put in our sales transaction ID, whether it's an invoice or order number, and I'll go ahead and do that now. And Starship will retrieve all of the order detail, where it's going to, what products are going to ship. And I'm going to change my view over here to the item view. And we can see we don't have any items coming over. We have primarily just the order header information. And I'm going to add my items. We're going to bring up the table of products here from Starship's database. So I'll go ahead and pick my first product and put in a quantity. And as we selected this item called Green Phone, we can see all of the international data will populate here from the Starship table. And you'll continue to build the shipment in the same fashion by selecting whatever products you need to ship out from the Starship database. And this is similar to the older platform of Starship, where you had the integration to the order header, the customer tables, but didn't have any product information. If you have Starship 9 or lower, there's a data conversion utility that will bring all of your commodities, also um, the packaging database, any broker or importer information, historical tracking numbers, a lot of different types of data that can be brought over through that conversion utility. The items uh, will show up here in the maintain inventory menu if you run that import. And we'll take a look at a line item here. So Starship is intelligent enough to create an item record uh, in real time as you're shipping against the database that has items coming over. And we'll create the record with the ERP item number description and unit of measure. We'll also save the weight and value. Or if you're mapping these dynamically, we'll just read it directly from the ERP tables. There's also packaging scenarios that can be defined. And these are formulas that can be used to auto-pack shipments. This is very useful if you have items that are sold in their own packaging, or you have uh, standard case packs that are sold. So you have 10 or 12 of an item that come in a box, and it's always a standard size. By creating these formulas, you have the ability to have Starship, uh, when it retrieves the sales transaction, it will look at the items, see if it has a packaging scenario defined, and can auto-pack those items for you. And this can be turned on or off at the item level. When you're shipping freight, we'll also keep track of the NMFC code and description, which is used in producing your bill of lading, the freight class, which is used in rating your freight or LTL type shipment. And then we have groups, which are used to organize your uh, different line items. So if you have similar products that share all the same properties, you have the ability to roll them up together as a single entry on the bill of lading by assigning them to a group. Now for international, we're going to keep track of the country of manufacture, also the Schedule B code and description. And that's used in producing your commercial invoice. You have the EEI classification, maybe more commonly known as SED. Any single commodity over $2,500 in value or different types of products that are being tracked by the government are required to file paperwork with the government prior to the carrier taking possession of the goods. So you can flag that exemption status here or if it is subject to an export license or ITAR, that can be flagged and will automatically produce the uh, paperwork that's required in order to get that through customs. You also have the flags here for the certificate of origin. Both the standard and NAFTA forms are built into Starship as well. 
So now that we've taken a look at the item integration, we're going to go ahead and turn on our line items to come over real time from our ERP. I can access that here through the setup menu. I'm going to go to financial system interface and get into my ERP mappings. If I customize the interface for sales transactions, I have this tree view here on the left hand side. I can scroll down to the line item section or I can use the search function at the top here. That will truncate to the nearest match. Now if you have an interface that was developed directly by V Technologies, typically the line item function is enabled already out of the box with version 12. If you want to disable that function and restore Starship to the uh, method that you're using in version 9, if you're not really concerned with items, you have the ability to disable that as well. You can right click here on the line item node and clear mappings and that will blow all those away. I'm going to turn that on. And we'll say OK to that and we'll take a look at the processing now with bringing over the line items in real time. I'll go ahead and put in my order again. And we can see here we've brought over our items, our quantities, and they have been packed into a box. I can add a box here and put these items into two separate boxes if I choose. Now if I click over on the item view, I can see I have my products here and it's pulled the related international details directly from the Starship table. These fields are also exposed to mappings as well, so if you have that information in your inventory uh, database, you have the ability to map it over real time as well. As this is international, there's an additional tab that will appear. So here on the international tab, I have some additional fields that I can populate for our commercial invoice. These are also exposed to mappings as well. We can declare the terms of sale here. And you also have the ability to map the, uh, the billing preference for the transportation charges, the customs taxes that can be mapped through the integration. And you can bill that to a recipient or third party account. There are also databases of brokers, importers, and consignees. So any third parties that may be involved with the transport of the international goods those can be flagged through the integration or selected here by the user. And here at the bottom you have the EEI filing information. If I click on the blue radio button here, that will bring up my commodities that need to be shipped out. Now these are flagged as exempt. If I take off that exemption status, I have the ability here to file directly with AES. If your company is certified to file on your own behalf, uh, you have the ability to click on the radio button here. And if you're logged into the website, this will bypass the need for you to have to go through the browser and manually key in all the data. It will take all the commodity information, the customer info, any third parties that are involved and upload that to the government website. And typically you receive a response from AES within 15 to 20 minutes via email. Once you get that email, there's a unique transaction ID that's assigned to your shipment. It's the ITN number. So you could copy and paste that into this field here. Or Starship has preferences that you can set up with your uh, inbound email where you can have Starship pull your inbox and it will parse through the emails to find that ITN number as a background task. Once it does that, it will copy the ITN number into the Starship database, at which point it will put the shipment onto the manifest. You do have the ability to allow the carrier to file on your behalf as well for a fee, so you can let UPS or FedEx take care of that for you. For today's purposes, we're just going to set this back to exempt and we'll continue with our process. I'll go ahead and process our shipment here, and then we'll see our export documentation pop up in just a moment. Here you have the commercial invoice. This is a standard form that's built into Starship as a template. You can modify this with whatever detail you want to add. You have the ability to add a company logo, change some of the formatting, add reference fields. But these are templates that are built in out of the box ready to go has your ship to and ship from information, also a spot for third party brokers or importers, and then has all of your commodity information broken out below with the quantity, the Schedule B code, description, the value, and you can produce as many copies as you need of that as well. You also have the certificate of origin, in this case it's going to Canada, so you have the NAFTA form. Now all these forms are available through the printing setup. If I go into my setup menu and printing, this is where all of your printing setup resides. You have your printers here that you define, your various labels for the different carriers. All of your export documentation lives here. You also have 
carrier-specific forms, the advantage of using the Starship forms is you have the ability to go in and customize those. If you use just the carrier forms, you get that back from the carrier and it prints out as is. There's no formatting uh, or control you have over the content of the forms. There's also paperless options available. UPS has uh, the uh, paperless invoice and also the uh, certificate of origin available as a contract service. So if your account is enabled for that, we'll be able to do that uh, easily without having to produce the forms. You also have FedEx electronic trade documents that can be enabled for the NAFTA form, the certificate of origin, and the paperless invoice. Let's take a look at one of our forms here. Once you enable the form, you can pick the printer where you want to send that to. You also have a PDF backup that can be done for any of your uh, paper documents, and this enables you to attach that to an email, or you have an archive of PDFs if you need to go back and find that particular document. Here's where you can enable the number of copies. You can have that auto print on ship, enable the preview to pop up, and pick which carriers you want to enable the form for. Now all of these forms reside here in Starship as templates. I'm going to take you into the form customizer now. This is where you have access to all of your audit labels. If you want to modify the reference field at the label bottom, your bills of lading, uh, packing lists, manifest reports, all of your export documentation. We'll take a look at a label here and we'll add some fields to that. You can simply drag and drop onto the form. This enables you to import a logo. You can draw on the form, create a text box. We'll add a barcode here. Let's say we want our customer's purchase order number. We can easily pick the type of data. And all the data is organized into different groups here. So I'm going to grab my order field, put my PO number on there, and then you continue to add whatever fields you want to the form. Once you've created the form uh, that you need to print out, you can simply do a save as. Give that a unique name, and then this would be available as a form that you can produce from Starship.